and I stop because I see something in the binoculars. What I see is looking right back at me through the binoculars. I stood there frozen, but it, it was looking at me. I was staring at it. It was staring at me and I finally got to the point where I could speak and the only thing I could say was, oh my God, oh my God. And I said, it is right there. It's right there behind that tree, David. It's looking right at me, David. It's right there. And I was frantic. It's right there. And I didn't even describe what it was. I just said it. It looked like somebody was bent over and had their head in the window of the deer blind. It either heard me or smelt me, and he pulled his head out of the tent and stood straight up, and that that shocked me. They don't make people that that big. The way it moved. Uh, almost as if it was gliding across the beach. I've never seen anything move like that in my life. They were screaming at each other in gibberish. It sounded like a language and they were chuntering away back and forwards, back and forwards, back and forwards. I know what a bear looks like and there is no way on this planet that what I saw were bears. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, commander of the armies of the North, general of the Felix Legions, and you are listening to Sasquatch Chronicles. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. Got a great show planned for you. Uh, Tonight, we're going to be chatting with Pansy. And Pansy comes to us from Kentucky. Uh, Her and her husband actually had a roadside crossing back in 2003. There's been a lot of weird things happen around her home. uh, But her and her husband actually went out for a hike. And they got a really good look at the creature. At least Pansy did. And uh, she's going to be talking about that tonight. If you've had an encounter and you'd like to be on the show, shoot me an email. My email address is Wes at SasquatchChronicles.com. If you get a chance, check out SasquatchChronicles.com. You can become a member and get additional shows. Uh, let's jump into it tonight. I want to welcome uh, Pansy to the show. Pansy, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and I appreciate you being here, Pansy. You know, prior to your encounter in 2003, what was kind of your feelings on Bigfoot? I don't even remember thinking about it much at all. You know, growing up and everything, I remember watching Harry and the Hendersons. And the only other time I ever remember Bigfoot being mentioned in our life at all was like in joking with my brother. Because my brother, he's this big macho guy that goes out hunting all the time, not afraid of anything. And we think it's so hilarious how he says that the only way he would hunt for Bigfoot was with a tank. And we just think it's so hilarious how afraid he is of it. So, and I don't know why. He doesn't even know why. It's just his fear. So we tease him about that. You know, like, beef, it's going to get you if you go out in the woods, you know. And that's the only thing I ever remember saying is, you know, just kind of in teasing with my brother. And that's it. I don't remember ever really thinking about it at all, one way or the other, really. Yeah, just kind of a passing thought. Um, Yeah. Tell me, back in 2003, if you would, would you just kind of walk us into what happened? Yeah. Um, at the time, I had ju- me and my husband had just moved in together. So we're boyfriend and girlfriend at this time. And he was working for a company that um, the man who owned it was a family friend of ours. 
So my brother also worked for the company and we were friends with everybody who worked there. So the guy who owns the company decides that he is going to have a cookout over his cabin in Ohio. This cabin is back off the road, probably about two miles, a good two miles off the gravel road. And uh, so he decides that he's going to have a cookout over there and invite everybody in the company and my family as well. So, you know, my dad, and my brother, you know, and all of our friends and everything are over there. And uh, we go over there and it takes about 45 minutes from where I'm at to drive over there. And uh, once you turn off the main road, you turn onto a gravel road and you go about two, three miles down through there. And uh, you'll come around a curve that kind of goes to the right. Then there's a little straight stretch that's maybe, maybe 300 feet long uh, before you turn off to go up to his cabin onto the um, dirt road that goes to his cabin. Well, we're just driving down through there. And like I said, it's, you know, several miles and I'm bored, you know, and I'm, you're going slow because you can't go fast. If anybody comes, you have to kind of pull over to let them go by you. So, you know, we're going slow and I'm bored and I'm just kind of looking out the passenger side window. And I think now looking back, it's what it was the movement that caught my attention. I'm assuming because I, I saw something in the, the passenger side mirror and that got my attention enough that I jerked around real quick. I mean, I almost gave myself whiplash. I turned so quick and looked out the back window of the car. And when I turned, of course, that got my husband's attention, who was my boyfriend at the time. And he looked up in the rearview mirror and then he turned to the left and looked out the back too. Out, well, actually, it would be out his, the driver's side window uh, to look back because the windows were down. And uh, the only, th it was just, the only way I can describe it is is a huge animal type creature covered in black, what looked like black fur. And you know, this is the middle of the day too. You know, this is probably around three o'clock in the evening. So the it's sun shining out, it's bright, you know, there's no doubt, there's no shadows or anything. You know, this is in the middle of the day, sun shining in the middle of the summer. And this thing walks out, takes two steps over off the side of the road into the woods, and is just is gone in the brush. Yeah, I'm not gonna say it disappeared. I don't think it just disappeared in the thin air. It just got over on the side of the road in the brush and we couldn't see it no more. So we're shocked, absolutely shocked. The hair on the back of my neck is standing on end. I've got cold chills all over me. And we just turn around and kind of look straight forward and we don't speak. You know, uh, we don't speak. We turn off of the gravel road onto the dirt road going up to the cabin. And then, like I said, it's a couple miles back and it's pretty flat all the way up through there until you get to um, where you go up to his cabin. It goes up a hill and it's kind of ready. And as we was going up the hill, uh, the car started dragging. And that's the first time we spoke was when the car started dragging because I freaked out and I told him, I said, you're not getting out of this car and leaving me and I'm not getting out and walking. We will sit here until somebody comes and gets us. I mean, we were that freaked out. We wasn't going to get out of that car at all. When when you say the car was dragging, do you mean like it it was ha you were having car troubles? Is that what you're saying? No. Uh, when the car drags where there's ruts in the road, the bottom of the car was actually hitting some dirt. Oh, And we I were afraid we were going to get stuck. Yeah, I like in you. a rut. Yeah. So, and that's why I was like, I'm not getting out of this car if we get stuck. Because I was afraid we was really going to get stuck because the bottom of the car was dragging the dirt pretty bad. Where it was a low sitting car. So that that's what happened in 2003. Like I said, this thing was I mean, the only way you can describe it is a big foot like creature, you know, big, huge, black. I mean, it looked like its hips were like up at the top of the car, you know, it was tall, huge, big creature, uh, long arms, the, the arms almost hung down to its knees. It had its fingers. I remember it had its fingers curled over. They weren't out. I couldn't see the tips of its fingers, almost like it had a fist, but not a top fist. But its fingers were curled over. But even with that, it was still hanging almost down to its knees. It took two big, long strides with its arms out and just was gone. And we didn't see it again. <sighs> yeah, it's shocking. It's shocking to see yeah. that. So at what point did you and your boyfriend, future husband, actually talk about what you guys saw when we got up to the campground uh, we were really shaking up and everything and you gotta remember up, up here everybody bought the four-wheelers so everybody was up there having a good time eating riding four-wheelers all the place because you know he's got his land up there pretty cut you know and he keeps it you know pretty clear and cut and everything so everybody's riding four-wheelers all over these trails and his property connects with the state forest 
So there's thousands and thousands of acres of land that his land connects to that you can go four-wheeling on and all that. So everybody was having a good time four-wheeling and everything. And uh, we get up there, and I remember telling my mom and dad. I didn't tell everybody, but I told my mom and dad what we'd seen. And, of course, my dad, you know, he's an old country guy, always hunting and stuff. And he's like, oh, whatever, you know, just kind of ignores me. And my mom believes me, you know, and she's like, well, did, were you going to go look for tracks? I'm like, no, Mom, I'm not going to go look for tracks. We're not going back down there. She just didn't realize how scary that was. I didn't want anywhere near the thing, and neither did David. And then I remember telling my brother, my brother had walked over and told him, and, of course, he just said I'm stupid and crazy. He, And I think part of his problem isn't that he just absolutely doesn't believe. He doesn't want to believe because he's afraid. And I think that really is one of his problems and why he gets on me so hot and heavy about this. He just, he doesn't want to hear it. He doesn't want to believe it. He doesn't want it to be real because then something that he's afraid of is real. So anyway, uh, we were, had talked about it and everything. And maybe, you know, I was thinking about that later on, why we didn't go ahead and maybe get a group of us together and go down and maybe look or send somebody down to look. But I remember that day, a woman uh, that was there, that was one of their friends, not one of ours, but one of theirs, um, had walked down to the pond to fish. She come back up screaming, crying. She had got bit by a copperhead. So we had to hurry up, and you know we were pretty far away from you know a hospital, at least forty five minute drive, and we had to hurry up and help her and get her into an interview and rush her to the hospital. So that kind of superseded anything about the Bigfoot thing, you know, the shock of her getting bit by the copperhead. And I think that's why it never really, you know, it just kind of dropped from that point on, you know, because the woman was a whole lot more important than anything, you know, Bigfoot wise or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. No, I and get... I remember, yeah, I remember that day everybody was like, come on, Bansy, go four wheeling. Come on. And they knew I loved it. I've, you know, I've done it all my life, four wheeling and stuff. And I was like, no, no, not today. I don't want a four wheeler day. And I was like, why? Why? I just don't want to. I wouldn't even get on a four wheeler that day and go four wheeling because I was afraid, you know, we'd run into something else. You know, and then thinking back about it, too, the creature walked from that side of the road where everybody was fooling to the opposite side of the road. Almost like it, because I was trying to figure out why would it walk out behind us? Why? You know, why would it Why would it want to come out at all? Everybody was fooling up there making a ruckus and stuff, almost like it, to me, like it scared it out. And it was crossing the road to get away from everybody that's up there making all the noise of fooling. I mean, that's just my opinion, you know. It just yeah. seems like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good, it uh, like right. it's a good take on it. You're probably right. Probably wanted to just kind of leave the area. Um, right. And it was smart enough to at least go behind the car, even though you still saw it. You know, you always right. hear the encounter where they walk right in front of your car. Um, yeah. And they really don't seem to care that you're there. But that wasn't, I mean, 2003, it wasn't like that's the end of that. Uh, you actually had another run in, but it, when, when did the next run in happen? The run-in happened May 1st of this year, 20 days ago. Oh, very recent. Very recent. Let me ask you, what kind of a distance are we talking about when you and your husband saw it in 2003 to to this recent encounter? Uh, what kind of a distance are we talking about? When we saw it in 2003, like I said, it walked from the side of the road, where the, the cabin side of the road, to the opposite side. And when we saw it May 1st, um, it was on the opposite side of the road, so the side that it had walked to, up on the hill and down the road, probably about another 100 foot, but up on the hill. Well, actually, in the creek. But, uh, but yeah, about up the road, about 100 feet and more on the hill. So on the so same right, in that, general area, right yeah. in that general area. Yeah, yeah that's what I was going to say, right in the same area, really. I mean, yeah. it's not like it's the next state over or anything like that. Right. No, it's right in that area. And it, yeah. Tell me about that. Tell me about that day. Okay. Um, well, I'll tell you, can I tell you a little bit about kind of what led up to me going back? Yeah, of course. Because I had been invited back several times to go fishing or coming over to another cookout, and I just wouldn't even go back over there. I was that spooked. I had spent my whole life in the woods, four-wheeling, playing hide-and-go-seek, never was afraid until that incident, and I hadn't been in the woods hardly since, except for hunting, but we hunt in a cabin that's like on 10 foot 10 foot in the air on stilts so you know i i don't hunt out in the woods though so uh what had happened is in last year summer of last year 
my son had uh, been sitting at the kitchen table and he heard a cop go by with his lights on. Well, here in the country, nothing ever happens. So when something like that happens, you know, you, you become a nosy neighbor. You want to know what's going on. So he walks outside and he's sitting at the back of my car in our driveway and watching the cops and stuff go by trying to find out what's going on. And he probably stands out there for about 30 minutes and decides he can't, you know, he don't know what's going on and gets bored. So he turns to come in. And when he turns to come back in, he looks to his left and he sees something. Um, now, our house is 102 feet long. OK. And it's basically two houses in one. So it's 102 feet long. And we own about over 400 feet of roadfront property. So on the property, there's the two houses and one, and then about 200 foot up, there's another home that we rent out and stuff. In between the homes, there's a garden, and then there's, on the other side of the garden, there's a fence that's all grown up with weeds and stuff, and looks more like a head. Then on the other side of the fence is a road that goes up the hill into the woods. Other side of the road is the, the home's, you know, yard where it starts. Well, he looks up to the left, and on the other side of this fence, where, you know, it looks like a hedge, he sees something. So he comes inside and he gets me and he says, Mom, come out here and look at this and just tell me what you think it is. He said, bring a flashlight. Well, at that time, I didn't have a good flashlight. We're lucky if the flashlight could shine 20 feet, honestly. It was just a little battery operated flashlight. So I go outside the flashlight and go where he's standing and he said, and then he said, look up there. So I look up there and the only way I describe it is it looks just like somebody. Uh, the way these bushes are made, the hedges are a little, almost five or a little, yeah, almost five foot tall at the small part. And then as you go to the right, there's a big bush that's grown up and it's, you know, almost nine foot tall. So what it looks like is it looks like somebody is standing behind this tall part of the bush and then would peek out over the five foot tall part of the bush and was looking at us. And there's no lights out. The only lights are, we've got one light that shines in the driveway where we're standing. Then the neighbor across the road has one light that's on their porch light and they don't shine very far. The only light we got is from the moon because the electric and everything's off of this trailer because there's no tenants in it at the time. So what I'm thinking is, that, okay, one of the, you know, the ex-tenants is up there going to mess around with the trailer, going to try to break in. That's what I'm thinking. So I tell my son, I said, well, just don't worry about it. We'll go back up tomorrow because this is about midnight, you know, and I said, we'll just go back up tomorrow and see what we can find out because I'm thinking I'm going to go up there and see where exactly where he walked, you know, and find out if he broke in the trailer or whatever. And then I'm going to call the police and show him. Well, the next day we get up and we walk up there. We walk up the yard and through the garden to get up there. And we walk on the other side of the fence. And sure enough, standing there, all the grass, because like I said, we hadn't had a tenant in like a month. The grass is all grown up because we hadn't mowed the grass yet. It's over knee high. But all the grass there on the other side of that fence where we thought we saw something standing is all pushed down. I mean, it's like smashed down. So then I know something has been standing there. But I go ahead and check and make sure there's no branches or any leaves or anything that could have been flung out that made it look like, you know, it was, a, you know, somebody peeking out. There's nothing that's wiggling or moving or, you know, in the wind or could move in the wind to pop out like that. So I'm like, okay, something de somebody's definitely be standing here. My next thought is, okay, this tenant is going to break into, the, you know, to the house. So my next thing is I turn around and I think I'm going to see a trail going to the trailer, you know, to the house. Well, I look and all the grass is digging up. It's all high. Nothing's been through there. So I'm like, okay, well, this guy didn't walk to the trailer. So he must have walked out to the road, you know, and walked on the road. So I look that way. There's no prints, nothing going towards the road, except for ours where we come up through the garden. And I'm like, okay, where did he go? The only other way is up through the woods. So I look up that way. And sure enough, there's a path going straight up the hill into the woods. Well, by then I'm creeped out. I'm like, what on earth? What man at midnight, you know, or after midnight in the dark would be dressed in dark clothes and walk up the hill? You know, and my son's like, mom, what did we see? And I'm like, I don't know. You know, and he's, he's 15 at the time. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. So we just, I just leave it. You know, I just leave it at that. And, you know, I tell my husband about it. He's like, I don't know either. We have no explanation for it. We don't know what it is. But we're still not saying that was Bigfoot. You know what I mean? That's not what I do. I don't see something here, something, smell something, and automatically say, oh, that's Bigfoot. Yep, that's Bigfoot. Yeah, you're thinking, you're, you're thinking yeah. that's a man at this point. 
someone kind exactly. of screwing with your property. Yeah, exactly. Because we had had problems with those tenants getting them out. The guy had tried to commit suicide. I mean, it's just a mess. So I'm thinking, you know, him a little bit, you know, on the crazy side because his wife had left him. Then maybe he'd come back up to break in or something like that. Because we'd had to have cops out there and everything. It was a mess. So I was really thinking this is a dude, you know, one of the tenants trying to break in. But I'll leave it, and I don't think no more about it. So then we get to this year in April, and my husband's wanting to start hiking, but I'm afraid of the woods. I don't like to go in the woods. I don't feel safe. Ever since 2003, I don't feel safe. And he says, what will it take for me to be able to get you to go out in the woods and hiking with me? Because that's something we always like to do together. And I said, well, he said, if I buy you again, would you go? And I said, well, if you buy me again that I'm comfortable with, yeah, I'll start hiking with you. Now I made him that promise. So he did, and he bought me my nine millimeter that I love. So we started hiking on the property, and we've got 85 acres. And then our property connects to a game club that's got over 3,000 acres. So there's cut trails and four-wheeler trails and everything that we've always played on, rode on, all back in there. So we start hiking and everything, and instead of just hiking on the roads, our okay, our property was logged back in the 2000s. I can't remember exactly what year, but it wasn't clear-cut, so there's still trees and stuff. But that was over 10 years ago that it was logged. So there's stuff, you know, it's grown back up and it's really bushy and thorny and stuff. So nobody walks off trail. It's just too hard to get through it. Everybody that goes up through there walks on the trail or rides on the trail. So he decides he wants to walk off trail and actually make our way through the, you know, the rough stuff. Because that's the best place to go in order to find like uh, deer sheds and stuff. He said he's never, you know, as much as he's been in the woods, he's never been able to find a deer shed and he wants to find one. So we go off trail and we go to the right. Well, on the right is a big hill and we're on the side of it walking up it. Well, we get all the way back in there. We come to a place where they had logged that the, the ground is slipping. So we call it a slip. So it's like um, soft dirt where it keeps, you know, coming down where the roots of the trees aren't holding it anymore. The ground's sliding down the hill, basically. So we go and we get on this slip and we start walking up the slip. When we get up almost to the top of the slip where the slip stops, we see what looks like two footprints on the slip, on the soft ground of the slip. And we're looking at them and we're kind of looking at each other. And sometimes it's where we can read each other's mind. We don't have to speak. And we're looking at each other like, who, who would have been here? You know, the only people that would have been on the side of the hill was the loggers. That was over 10 years ago. Their footprints wouldn't have remained. Number one. And number two, uh, it wasn't slipping when the loggers were here. It didn't start slipping until, you know, a year or so later, you know, after the ground starts settling and everything. And so we're looking at each other like, who would be here? And he's like, I don't know. And I was like, I don't. It's but it's footprints, you know, and you can look at it. And the more we look at it, it looks more like a barefoot footprint than what it does a boot footprint because you can see little impressions of toes and stuff. And I was like, okay, I don't know, David, I'm creeped out. Let's just, let's just go. So the footprints had led up to the old logging trail that's now grown up. You can see whatever had walked through there had walked to the left and down the old logging trail. Well, I wanted to go to the right because I wanted to go towards home. So we did. We went to the right. We didn't walk very far down that logging road when we heard what now I know is what they call a knock. What sounds like a tree knock. Then it was just a noise that I didn't know what, what it was. I was like, what was that? Because I hadn't really heard it before. And he was like, I don't know. So we made our way back home, and that was the end of that. Well, several days later, we go on another hike. We go up in the woods. We go to the left. When we get up there, we're following a game trail up on the left side of the hill, and we come to, I don't even know how to explain it. It almost looks like a little like canopy-like structure um, that... Uh, almost looks like a little little house made of um, grass and stuff. You know what I mean? Stems and leaves and everything. And uh, I was like, well, that's cute. That almost looks like a little house. And uh, you can see where something had walked up in there and where something had been laying underneath it, you know, out of the weather and stuff, out of the rain. And, you know, we're looking at it and everything. We're like, okay, well, this is probably where the deer come up and they get out in there out of the rain and all that. But as we're looking around, my husband points out there's trees that are broke off and they're high. And my son, my son was with us at this time. He's 16. Like I said, he's six foot tall. He's a big boy, weighs 300 pounds. You know, he's got um, two, two foot shoulders. You know, he's a big boy. And I tell him, I said, go over and stand beside that and put your hand up. And let me take a picture to see how tall that is. 
So he does, and he puts his hand up. So that was over seven foot tall where that break was in that tree. And there's several of them. And they're broke off. And the way the tree is broke off is broke off over seven foot tall. And then it's pushed down. And the part that's broken is pushed in and made part of this canopy. So we was looking at that. And we just thought that was really weird how that was broken, how these trees were broken off in that area. Um, so as we're walking around looking at this, my husband goes, oh, my God, I found a deer shed. <laughs> so he finally found his deer shed. And he was so happy. But we continue our walk, and then it's starting to get dark, so we head back down off the hill onto the trail that comes back down to the house. As we're walking, we can hear something. Sounds like it's walking. Um, like as we're walking on the left side, it goes downhill. It's really brushy and everything, and it goes downhill. On our right side, it's woods, and it goes, you know, up uphill. So as we're walking on the left, down over the hill in the brush, we can hear something walking. Well, we stop, then we can't hear it walking no more. So we'll start walking again, and then we hear it walking. Then we'll stop, then we can't hear it walking no more. So David, without speaking, you know, using like sign language, tells us to walk on up without him, and he'll stay there and see if he can hear it walking, you know, himself while we're walking up through there, see if he can hear exactly where it's coming from. So we walk on up through there. We probably get about 20, 30 feet in front of him. and stop and look at him and he's still listening and looking down there but you know he shakes his head no he don't hear it walking so he just walks back up and joins us and we continue on walking we get maybe 10 15 foot and then we hear it again it's down there besides walking you can hear it walking with us so he tells us again go another you know go on without me i'm gonna stay and listen again but this time i get my son and i whisper to him this time, let's act like we're talking. I said, let's just say, like, yeah, and then wait a couple seconds, then you say, yeah, and then, you know, continue doing that. That way, we're pausing in between speaking, and we can hear if it's walking, but it still sounds like we're talking, you know, because I'm, you know, an animal. I don't know what you're saying. It just hears a voice, and maybe it'd start walking again. That was my thought anyway. So, that's what we did. We walked about 40 feet going, yeah, yeah, you know, and just listening in between. And can't hear anything. So, again, my husband, he comes back up there with us. Didn't hear anything. Again, we go another 10, 15 foot. Then we can hear it walking with us again. So, we just continue on because this thing doesn't sound like it's getting any close or anything. And we think, okay, well, it's probably a coyote because we had had a coyote that had, you know, walked where we had walked and stuff before. We'd seen its tracks after we walked through. And, uh. We'd do a big circle and come back, and new coyote prints would be there. So we're thinking, okay, this is a stupid coyote. So we just go on walking, and we get down um, to where the land clears out. It's no longer woods. There's a field on the left, and then you could see our house. So we go on, and we walk down over to the left, down into the field. Well, when we're down in the field, that puts this thing up on the hill in front of us now, where it was on the left side of us. We've moved around into the field. Now it's up you know, in front of us, up on the hill. Uh, but we're not paying any attention to it. We're just down in the field talking and everything and, you know, just looking around, whatever. And uh, every once in a while, we can hear something sounds like it's walking, but we're not, you know, we're not paying any attention to it. And then all of a sudden, a rock comes out of the woods and hits about 10 foot in front of us. And, of course, all of us look at it and, and look at each other. And we're like, what was that? And, you know, we just ignore it and think, okay, maybe it was some something fell out of a tree or something or whatever. Well, that happened like four more times. And we just look at each other like, what is, what is going on? So we're like, whatever. So it's really getting dark now. And I'm like, let's just go back to the house. So we do. Well, a couple of days later, um, we've got an extra room on the house that we keep a safe and we keep all the guns in and stuff. We've also got an extra refrigerator out there. And that's where we keep our pop and all that. So I had walked out there to get me a pop. And my 13-year-old son was out there. And as soon as I walked out there, he jumped up and ran out the back door and was looking up on the hill. And so I walked over to him. I said, son, what are you doing? And he said, mom, it's not there. And I said, what are you talking about? What's not there? And he said, the face. I said, what are you talking about? He said, I come out here to relieve myself because, you know, we're in the country. Boys can do that. And I don't know why he doesn't instead so of walking two feet to the bathroom. But yeah. he said, I walked out here to relieve myself. He said, and it looked like there was a face up there on the hill behind the fence. And I said, okay. He said, 
And I, I thought, okay, well, it's just brush or something. He said, and I thought, okay, well, I'll just wait until later and I'll look again. And if it's not there, then I saw something. But if it's still there, then, you know, it was just leaves or something. He said, mom, it's not there. And I said, okay, well, we'll just wait until your dad gets home from work and then we'll go up there and check it out. And I'm thinking, you know, it's nothing. It was probably just leaves. He just saw something, you know, ain't no big deal. You know, he's just a kid. So his dad gets home, we go up there to check, and I go um, up inside the fence to check it out, where my husband and son go around the outside of the fence to check it out. And because uh, Gannon thought, he thought it was on the outside of the fence, but he wasn't sure. He couldn't be sure. It was right up against the fence one way or the other. So I walk on the inside, and as I get up to where it kind of flattens off, I see what looks like an impression of a foot in the grass now this grass has grown up inside this fence it's pretty tall and when you step on it it'll start turning collars it's no longer green like it's dying or whatever so i can see it plain as day there's an impression in the grass and it's big i ended up measuring it and i think took uh, photos of it and stuff and it was 17 like almost 17 inches long this impression was i looked back and i saw another impression but it wasn't as good as this one was well, in the meantime, they're around the back of the fence checking it out, and they holler at me to come up there and look. So I go up there and look, and right there behind the fence, every bit of the grass back there is pushed down, like where something big had been laying or tromping through there or something. And we look for a trail to see if it come down the hill to the road or if it went up the hill into the woods, and it went up the hill. The trail is, I mean, as plain as day through the grass going up the hill. So we see that, and... uh and because we see this, you know, all this stuff starts getting me thinking. You know, my mind's going, not her mile a minute. What am I seeing? What is going on? This can't be real. You know, I know I've saw stuff, but this still, this is this does not exist. This cannot be happening. I'm just seeing things. I'm, you know, and I don't want to be one of those people that everything they see is Bigfoot, everything they hear is Bigfoot. I'm not like that. You know, it it's a squirrel or it's something, it's not Bigfoot first. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, so I start really thinking and everything about it. And in the meantime, we're still hiking and, uh, there's one more thing. We go on another hike and it's, you know, maybe a week later we go up the middle of the property where we had been on the right and the left. Now we're checking out the middle. We go up this old road that's grown up and on the way up through there, we see, because nobody's been up there. Nobody's been up this middle trail for years. It had been all grown up and you couldn't get up through there. So we're going up through there and we see all kinds of deer track, coyote, turkey, raccoon, fox. I mean, you name it, we see it. It's been through there. We get to the end of the trail where it starts to, it's just like this little round field, little tiny field, right before it goes up the hill up to where our gas line is and where our hunting cabin and stuff is. And uh, right before you get to that field, um, there's like a little tiny knoll there. There's one whole footprint that looks like a bare footprint, looks like a right foot. And then there's a partial on on the little knoll. And it doesn't, it ain't a full footprint. It just looks like um, toes and like the ball of a foot. It's not no heel or nothing, just like the toes and the ball of a foot. And at first, when I, I see the big one, but then I see the small one, and I look at my husband, I'm like, oh, my God, is that bear? Because that's what I'm thinking, you know, with that small one. And he's like, no, I don't think so. There's no calls or anything. You know, and I'm like, okay, then what is this? And he's like, I don't know. So I take pictures and stuff, and then we go on about our business. But all this is rolling over in my mind with what I saw in 2003, you know, and what we saw behind the fence. Now, these tracks and stuff that are weird that we're finding, we can't be sure. But what is going on? What is this? You know, what is this? So I start talking about maybe I should go back over to Ohio. You know, check it out. I haven't been over there in 18 years. You know, I'm starting to really get the itch to want to go back. So I was uh, talking about it with my mom. And my mom, she was like, oh, my God, do you remember when we was over there fishing? And I was like, what do you mean? She said, the day we went over there to the cabin when we was fishing at the pond. Do you remember? And all of a sudden, that memory came back to me. I had totally forgot about it. We had went over to the cabin. It was sometime in the 90s. And I was a teenager before the 2003 incident, before I ever met David. We had been over there fishing. And uh, his pond is clear on three sides. Then on the right side, it's woods and goes up into the hill. 
So we were standing there fishing on the clear side, and my cousin, he was the only one over on the wood side fishing. Then all of a sudden, um, it sounds like I don't even know what is coming down the hill towards us, towards the pond. We can see trees shaking and everything, and it sounds like I don't know what is tearing down everything coming through there. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, here comes the bear, you know, and it's a big one. My cousin who's over there, and he's a big, you know, strong hunter and not afraid and goes coon hunting at night and everything. He screams like a woman and throws his fishing pole and everything down and comes running to us. I mean, it's that loud and it's that scary. And he comes running ahead of us and he's shaking. He's like, what? What is that? And I'm like, I don't know. And we're all freaking out. And uh, my dad, who had been at the other end, he comes walking over there. And, of course, you know, he's Joe Macho Cool. And he was like, ah, that wasn't nothing. I, that was a feeder Mike's got up on the hill. And what he's talking about is one of those electronic deer feeders that you f- uh, fill with food. Then every so often it's timed to just go off and scatter food into the woods, which wouldn't make a lot of noise. But I don't think it'd shake the trees and stuff. So we were all looking at each other like, I don't think that was a feeder. But uh, after me and, you know, and I had kind of forgot about it or whatever. But then after me and David got together, I remember uh, he was working for that man. So I asked that man, did you have a feeder up on the side of the hill at that pond up in the woods? He said, no, I've never had a feeder over there. I was like, okay. So I know it wasn't a feeder. So I'm thinking it was a bear for sure. A bear was coming down out of those woods after I was that day. So, uh, oh gosh, starting to sweat. Because it's like I'm trying to avoid getting to the May 1st thing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, let's just walk into it. What happened on May 1st? Because all of this, Ohio, all of these states are relatively close to where you're at there in Kentucky. Right. Um, And so I understand, you know, wanting to go back. But tell me what happened. What? See, was it you and David that went back? You and your husband? Yes. Me and my husband. Uh, We, whenever my mom told me that story, there's one other thing. I had got on Google Maps because I was trying to, like, uh, map out the train and what path we're going to take on our hike when we go over there on May 1st. And I, I got to looking at where the pond was, and then I thought, huh, well, I wonder where that pond is in relation to the gravel road, you know. And so I zoomed out, and the pond is actually in direct line to where the road is, to where we saw that thing cross in 2003. So, yeah, that creeped me out because I was like, oh, my gosh, literally walk from the pond to the road where we saw that cross. And it was just weird. So I'm starting to get excited instead of afraid. I'm starting to get excited. You know, I'm like, I, you know, I'm going to go back over there and, you know, maybe we'll find something. And I have somehow my curiosity has over overrode the fear. OK, so we get everything together and, I, you know, I have measuring tapes with me and I've got um, a shovel with me. I've got this casting material that I bought from Hobby Lobby with me in case we see a footprint. Um, you know, and then I've got my gun, you know, and everything. I've got everything together in a backpack. We've got a lunch packed in the cooler. We're going to go over there and hike all day. So we go over there and we uh, come up around the curve and we we go past where you turn off the mics, turn around and come back to park to where we're, the SUV is facing the way we came in. So it's facing going back out. And uh, we park and we get out and uh, we're standing there talking and everything and at this point, even just standing there, knowing that we're getting ready to go back out and everything, I start getting afraid. You know what I mean? But I'm trying to fight it. It's like, you know, it was your idea to come over here. You're not going to do all this. Drive all the way over here and then not go in the woods. It's just crazy. So I'm trying not to be a chicken. So I tell him I would like to measure the road just to see how wide that road is where we saw it cross. And I would also like to look and just see what the land looks like right there where we saw it cross at. You know, just kind of trying to make more sense of it in my mind, I guess, trying to figure it out. And uh, so we get out and we go up and we measure the road. And from gravel, from the ed- edge of the gravel to the other edge of the gravel is uh, 18 foot. From where the grass starts at the edge, the grass on the other side is 24 foot. So even just the 18 foot where we think we had first saw it at, the two strides, you know, it's it's an 18 foot distance that that thing stepped in two steps. And, uh, you know... It's just, you know, it's just weird. So we get all of our stuff together and everything, and we walk up the road, and uh, we see a little uh, waterfall. And I think the waterfall's pretty, so I take a little video of the waterfall left to right and everything. And uh, 
Then we go back to the truck, make sure we got everything we need, and we're going to start out on the side where the cabin's at. So we start, and we go off the road, and we're only about 20 foot off the road when all of a sudden I smell deer urine bad. I mean, it is strong. And I start looking around thinking I'm going to see a deer really close to me or something, or a deer or something, something that describes the, the amount of smell I smell because it is strong. I mean, literally, the only way I can describe it is it smells like somebody has got a bottle of doe urine open standing right beside me, and I can smell it. That's how strong it was. So, you know, we stopped and we sniffing around trying to figure out where this was coming from, and uh, we couldn't figure it out. So I was like, okay, then it just left. We couldn't smell it. Anymore. So we just went on, and, you know, we'd get about 20, 30 more feet, and we'd smell it again. And again, we'd look around. Where is this coming from? Well, it did that several times up until I think when we got to the top of the hill. And, you know, by this time, we're just dismissing it because we haven't seen anything. We haven't heard anything. You know, we're just dismissing it thinking, you know, it maybe we're walking because we're walking on the game trail. We're walking right where it had used the bathroom before, and we're just kind of kicking up the smell. That's, that was our, our definition of what we were smelling and why we were smelling it that way. So we get up to the top of the hill, and we start looking around, and – um. We start seeing, you know, like trees that are broken off and stuff, um, like weird trees, trees like are stuck in forks and everything and just doesn't look normal, just weird looking. And then we come upon this one tree that's got a fork in it. And it was so weird that I took a picture because all these tree limbs are laying in this fork, like vertical, you know, and it, they could have fell over and landed in the fork, you know, a couple of them maybe, but there's several of them laying in that fork that way. And then what was really weird to me is that on top of the vertical ones, there's two that are laying on top of the vertical ones horizontal. And how it even stayed there, I don't know. But then there's one more laid on top of the horizontal ones back vertical, like it's keeping them on there, holding them on. And I thought, okay, now that can't happen that I know of in the wild. How would something fall like that and end up with two going horizontal and then one back on top of it vertical? I just couldn't figure it out. I thought it was weird. So I took a picture, and then uh, we I had left my billfold in the truck like a dummy on the console. So we're trying to keep an ear out to make sure that we don't hear anybody stopping by the SUV. We don't want nobody breaking in and getting my billfold. Well, we walk. We have been walking for almost two hours by now, walking around looking at these different, you know, uh, I don't even know what you call them, uh, tree things, weird tree things. And uh, not really – Every once in a while, we'd hear something walk or something, but not really hearing much of anything. It's pretty, you know, dead sounding, really. But uh, we walk on, and we hear a vehicle. Sounds like it stops at the SUV. So we hightail it back down out of the woods to make sure nobody's breaking in. And, uh, you know, we get down there. Luckily, nobody was breaking in. Just, I guess, our imagination that it would stop there. But I go ahead and get my bill phone, put it in my backpack. That way, if someone, you know, would break in, the only thing they're going to steal is the cool and some pop. And that ain't no big deal. And uh, we didn't want to have to get back up on the hill and have to rush back off again to make sure nobody's breaking in. So we get back. And by now, it is uh, probably after one in the afternoon. You know, sun's shining. It's warm out. It's not too warm. You know, it's just perfect. You know, perfect day. And uh, we decided to go ahead because we hadn't ate yet. We didn't even eat breakfast. We'd left without eating to go ahead and uh, eat our lunch. So we stand there and we're eating lunch talking and listening and chilling nothing's really happening i'm feeling really comfortable you know with the place because i'd already been on the hill and nothing ate me so i was feeling pretty good but uh as we're standing there talking a limb comes flying off the hill and lands in the creek about 10 foot in front of us now to explain to you the way the side of the hill on the opposite side of the cabin is we'll call it the right side so the opposite side of the cabin and on is the right side of the road uh, it is about 20 foot of creek, and it's not just one creek that runs in the middle. It's It branches off, and there's several different waterways through there with land in between them, and it's about 20 foot wide. And then it goes to a cliff that's basically a straight-up bank that's about 20 foot high, and then once you get up to the top of the bank, it flattens off again. So what we saw was, and we heard it first, we heard something crashed into the woods. Now, mind you, we're standing at the back of the SUV with the SUV door open, looking right up there because we hear something first. And we see this tree limb come over the cliff, 
you know, and hit the branches of the trees in the creek and then fall down into the creek. You know, and I'm like, oh, my God, what just happened? Well, my husband, he goes over and he picks up the limb and looks at it. You know, and it's over four feet long and, you know, probably three inches, at least diameter, three, four inches, you know, pretty good size branch. And he looks at it and he looks all around and he lays it back down and he looks at me and I said, please tell me that that branch fell out of the tree. And he said, uh, sure, the, you know, the branch fell out of the tree, even though this branch doesn't match any of the trees right here. And, you know, so he told me what I wanted to hear without lying to me all in one, all in one breath. You know, he knew I wanted to hear that it just fell out of the tree, but it couldn't have just fell out of the tree because it wasn't a branch that could have fell out of those trees. It was a totally different tree. And we know it couldn't have fell out of the tree because we heard it come over the cliff. We heard it coming through the woods. We watched it come over the cliff. So how it did it, I don't know. But I, at that point, I was freaked out. So <laughs> we went ahead and was eating lunch and everything. And I was taking my time eating lunch at this point because I did not want to go back out into the woods. And uh, he is done. So he goes over and he's looking for a walking stick, something he can you know, chop off and make into a walking stick. And uh, he finds one, and as he's chopping it, he's got a machete with him. As he's chopping it, it breaks off too short, and he's like, dag on it. So he throws it over on the side of the creek bank, and he goes looking for another one all the time I'm eating. And then he goes over, he finds another one, and he's chopping it, and then he goes, dag on it. And I said, what's wrong with that one? He said, this one's full of ants. So he throws it over on top of the other one on the tree, on the creek bank. Both of them are sitting right there, right in view, you know, on the creek bank. So anyway, I get done eating slowly, and he's wanting to go up on the side of the hill where this stick just come from. And I am not wanting to go up there. I'm trying everything I can without disappointing him by saying, no, you know, we're not going up there. Because he, you know, I had agreed. If he got me the gun, we'd start walking. So I didn't, I didn't want to disappoint him. So I was like, well, let's, let's just go ahead and check all in the creek and see if we can find any prints or, you know, anything. See what's been walking through the creek. So we do, and we're walking through there, and we do find a couple prints, but where it's so close to the road, it could have been anybody who, who parked there, got out, and walked in the creek. You know, it could have been any human. So we just totally dismiss them and just go on. And as you walk up the creek, um, the, the cliff on your right, as you're walking up the creek, starts to get um, less high. You know, it just slowly gradually starts you know getting less high as you walk up the creek but the creek also starts getting narrower and uh so as we're walking up the creek david says do you smell that and i'm like what no what what do you smell and by this time where we had walked on the other side my allergies were acting up something awful and i was having to breathe through my mouth and my lips were even getting chapped from having to breathe through my mouth and I remembered even telling David, I wish I brought my Blistex because my lips were getting chapped. And I was like, no, I don't smell anything. What is it? And, you know, he, you could see literally the wheels turning in his head where he's thinking, trying to figure out what it is he's smelling. And he said, it smells like like rotten meat. And uh, uh, and you see he's still sniffing the air, trying to figure out what this is. And he says, and uh, he says, shit. He says, smells like rotten meat. And I don't know if I'm allowed to like say a dirty word on here, but I did. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. And he literally says, it smells like rotten meat and shit. And I said, I can't smell it. And I couldn't smell anything. But I know he ain't lying to me. He don't make, he's not one of those men who make up anything. He's very direct. He doesn't get real excited about anything. You know what I mean? So he's very calm. You know, uh, he looks like Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's intimidating. He's not making this up. If he smells something, he smells something. So I was like, no, I don't smell it. So we continue on up in the creek to where it gets to, to the point where it's too narrow to walk in anymore down in the creek. So we walk our way back up and get into the road and walk on up to the road to where that waterfall was that I told you that I had videoed earlier. So we walk up there and we're looking at it and there's the waterfall to the left. Then right in the middle, when you're looking straight, the waterfalls to your left, there's a gully that runs up the hill. And to the right, there's this tree that was originally on the hill, but where the creek has been through there, it's washed out part of the roots of this tree. So part of it's hanging out in the creek and part of the root system, everything's hanging out in the creek. So he says, well, here's, I think here's a good place because the whole time we're walking up the creek, we're trying to find a place to get up the cliff, to get up there to where it flattens off. 
and we can't find any place to get up it. It's too steep. We see one game trail that kind of works its way up it, but it's even still too steep. We'd have to get on our hands and knees and literally pull ourselves up it, and we weren't going to do that. So he sees this gully, and he says, let's just go through the creek right here and go up the gully and, you know, look up in there and then, you know, head on out. So I said, okay. So we work our way up the gully, and we go up there. I don't even know how far we went, but we found a log, and it was covered in moss, and uh, something had been digging at it, and we got to looking at it, and there was a place on it where the moss looked like something with fingers had grabbed hold of the moss and pulled it off. You can see little prints, you know, like finger marks, like where something had grabbed it and ripped it off. So, you know, we look at that and I just, you know, take a picture of it. And David, at this time, you know, we're kind of joking, laughing because nothing's happened big, you know, or to scare us at this point. And we're laughing. And he said, I think I'm going to leave whatever it is a ding dong. And I said, OK, which is like a little cupcake, chocolate cupcake. <laughs> and I was like, OK, you just go for it. You go ahead and, and leave this thing a ding dong. And he was like, okay. So at the top of the log, he puts it down and he puts a little ding dong down for it. And then we see that the leaves have been turned over where something has been walking up the hill, which is the way he was originally wanting to go anyway. And the direct way I did not want to go because that was the way that this stick had come from. So he uh, says, well, let's follow this trail, this game trail up through here. So we do. And I thought, you know, we were thinking it's weird because. The leaves were toned over in over a two foot, maybe three foot wide section where usually game trails are, you know, not very wide at all. And this, you know, look like something, several somethings had been walking back and forth through there or something. But anyway, we follow this trail up on up on the hill and we come up to another log again, covered in moss. And we see what looks like some something had put its foot up on the moss. The moss is a real, real light green, but then where this moss was smashed down in the shape of a footprint, and it's not a whole footprint, it's just like the toes and the ball of the foot, foot, foot footprint in the moss, and it's dark green where it had pushed in that moss. So I take a picture of it, you know, and again, we're still not going, yep, that's big fit. We're not talking about it at all, really. We're just kind of joking around, making a joke of it, really, honestly. You know, just kind of being silly, making a joke of it. Well, <laughs> we go walking on. We come upon a log that's laying beside this game trail we're following. And the log, one of its limbs, is laying right out in the game trail. Well, that limb is broke right where the log is at. Uh, right where the limb joins the log. It's broke right there. Like something had walked up through there, through that game trail, and stepped on the limb and broke it off. That's what it looks like. So we're staying in there looking at this limb and everything, and he gets on the limb and tries to break it, and he can't. You know, like I said, he's six foot, 240, and, you know, looks like Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know what I'm saying? He could not break the limb. So he's like, well, whatever stepped on it must have been heavy, you know. And again, we're still not saying anything, you know. Uh, you know, we're just making note of what we're seeing, not trying to say what did it, just that it had to be something heavy. So I take a picture of the tree and everything, and we're kind of standing there, and he says, oh, my God, do you smell that? And again, I said, no, I cannot smell anything. What do you smell now? And he says, that's that same smell. It smells like rotted meat and shit. And I said, I cannot smell it. He said, I don't, cannot believe you cannot smell it. It's strong. But I could not smell anything. And I was like, well, I don't know. So we're still sitting here looking at this log. And, and I have binoculars, you know, around my neck by string. And uh, every once in a while, I pick up the binoculars and just kind of case around me, you know, go all the way around, making sure through the binoculars that nothing was getting anywhere near me. You know, just keep, you know, just making sure I'm safe. Um, being paranoid. <laughs> so I didn't want a bear sneaking up behind me and me not know it's coming. So uh, very alert. But. I get the binoculars, and uh, yeah, this is the point where I, I've, if you could see me right now, I've literally got sweat pouring off of me. <sighs> Drop my phone even. So I've got the binoculars, and I, you know, I'm looking up the hill. I'm looking back the way we heard the stick, which is, you know, back towards the SUV, you know, away from the way we come up. And, uh, you know, I pan over, and I pan over back the way we came. So I'm looking directly the way we came. We just walked from. 
and I'm just kind of looking through the woods and everything, and I pan over to the left, um, like right before you get to the creek, you know, the hill part right before you get to the creek, and uh, and I stop because I see something in the binoculars. Sorry. What I see is looking right back at me through the binoculars. I stood there frozen because I knew what I was seeing. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And the only th at first, I didn't say anything. I just stood there frozen looking at it, looking at me. And I mean, it felt like it was looking at me through the binoculars, you know, like it could Almost like I could tell what I was thinking or something. It was so weird. But it it was looking at me. I was staring at it. It was staring at me. And I finally got to the point where I could speak. And the only thing I could say was, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And, you know, David later described, he said, for 20, a good 20 seconds, that's all I did was stood there with the binoculars saying, oh, my God. Oh, my God, David. Oh, my God, David. Oh, my God. Until he finally said, what? What is it? Because at this point, he's looking that way, trying to see what I'm seeing, you know, and trying to look at where I'm looking. But he's not seeing anything because he's up the hill just a little bit from me up to the right. And I, I don't know if it was just where he's standing or what, but he can't see anything at this point. And I'm like, oh, my God, David, it's right there. It's right there. And I didn't even describe what it was. I just said it. And it's like he automatically knew what I was talking about when I said it. And I think from the way I was acting and how hysterical I was getting, he knew what I was seeing. And I said, it is right there. It's right there behind that tree, David. It's looking right at me, David. It's right there. And I was frantic. And I was still looking at this thing through binoculars. And it wasn't making a move. It was just sitting, standing there, sitting there or whatever it was doing. Because I, the only thing I could see was from like almost the waist or a little bit above the waist up. And I could see what would be its right side, its shoulder, chest, and then the head down to the waist. That's what I could see. And I stood there just staring at it through the binoculars. And I don't even know how long it was that I stood there saying, oh, my God, oh, my God, staring at it. And I, I didn't make a move until it, it blinked. I seen it through the binoculars blink. And when it blinked, it moved behind the tree, and I didn't see it for a second, and then it moved right back out, looking right at me again. And when it did that, Wes, the only way I can describe what I felt was I lost my shit. I lost it. I lost it. I dropped the binoculars. I started backing up, and I was backing up, getting ready to go off the 20-foot cliff. And I didn't. I don't even know. I don't know if I realized I was getting ready to go off the cliff or if I just did not care. But I wanted away from this thing, and I wanted away now. And I don't know why I felt that terror. I cannot tell you why I felt so ter so terrified. I mean, I was petrified. I, was, I wasn't I was just shaking all over. I was convulsing. My whole body was convulsing. I could not hardly, even though I was taking steps, my legs were so shaky and so weak. I felt like I was going to fall every time I took a step backwards. And the only thing I was saying was, oh, my God, David, get me off this hill. Get me off this hill, David. Get me off this hill. And in the meantime, he's trying to look at me and trying to look that way to make sure this thing ain't coming or trying to see it or whatever. And he knows I've seen something because he's never seen me this scared in his life. And he's like, he sees that I'm backing up towards a cliff. So his first reaction is stop. And he tells me to stop. And that somehow my body knew to obey and it stopped. Because, you know, he's just like, stop. He said, you're going to back over the cliff. Stop. It's not coming towards us. You are safe. Just stay there, please. Just stop. And then he's looking back that way. And he says, go ahead and see if you can find that game trail we saw earlier coming up the cliff. And I'm like, no, David, no, I can't, I can't, I can't. And he's like, you've got to. I'll keep watch. You look for the game trail. So I'm, you know, trying to look that way, you know, the way I see it. And also look down, you know, to my left at the game trail or for the game trail off the cliff. All the while, you know, shaking all over, can barely walk, you know, frantic. I'm, you know, almost in tears. And then David said, oh, my God, I see its arm. 
I'm lucky I didn't have a heart attack right then and there when he said that, really. Because at this point, I think, looking back, that he was my uh, my rock, my only, my only sanity at this time. You know what I mean? I'm like clinging to him to get me through this because I'm losing it. And when he said, oh, my God, and acted kind of frantic, a man who hardly ever shows emotion at all, I freaked out again. And at this point, I'm now crying and hysterical. Please get me off this cliff, David, please. Oh, God, we've got to go back the way it came. Because at this point, I'm still thinking we're not going to be able to make it down off this cliff. We're going to have to walk right back toward it to get down off the hill the way we came up. And I'm flipping out. And he's like, no, we will go down that game trail even if we have to scoot down it. You know, and he's really keeping watch now because he's seen its arm. And I look, I happen to look up, and I see it again, but it's not through the binoculars, just through with bare high. And what I see, I can only describe as it looked like it's from the back because all I see is like a black silhouette. And this black silhouette is leaning to the right and like almost like it's got its arm on the ground or something. I don't know because I'm still only seeing waist up and I can't figure out how I'm only seeing waist up because it looks like it's behind the tree on the hill. But uh, it's leaned to the right, and I can't make out its arm. I can see its shoulders on the right, but not its arm, because it's like its arm's tucked up against the side. But I can make out the arm on the left side, and it looks like it's up and like almost like it's grabbing the tree or holding on to the tree or something. I can't see the hand or nothing. I can just make out the arm, the silhouette of the body, the head, the shoulders. Then all of a sudden, it just leans forward and is gone. It's like it just, I don't even know how to describe it bending forward because, I mean, we can bend forward, but if we bend forward to our waist or whatever, I don't know. It just looked weird the way it bent over. That's all all I know how to describe. I can't describe how it bent over. It just didn't look like the way we would bend over. You know what I mean? Like we would have to use more arms or uh, bend a different way in order to bend the way it did. It just bent over and was gone. Just poof, gone. And I'm like, oh, my God, where'd this thing go? So now we can't see it. And I'm just trying to get down off the hill. So I find this game trail. David's looking, staring straight that way, you know, keeping watch. And he's trying to soothe me and talk to me and say, it's okay, baby, I've got you. You know, it's not coming this way. I don't see it no more. I can't hear it. I'm watching. It, if it comes this way, I've got your back. You know, don't worry. Go ahead and make your way down the hill. So I'm scooting on my butt down this cliff, trying to get down this cliff. And I'm scared death of heights. But at that point, did not care. Wanted down. Didn't care if I had to jump. I was that afraid. So I'm scooting down my butt down this cliff, and I get by halfway down, and it's like I realize, oh, crap, my husband's still at the top of this hill with this thing. So I turn around. I go, David, come on, please. Come on. Don't, you know, come on down with me. Don't stay up there, you know, because then I'm afraid for him. So he says, okay. So he starts coming down the hill, and, you know, I'm watching, you know, as best I can up over that direction, trying to make sure I don't see anything as he's making his way down to me. When he gets to me, we both work, mark our way back down the cliff to the creek. We cross the creek and go up to the road. And at this point, to the left is the SUV in safety. To the right is back up to where we just saw this thing at. I get in the road, and I start to head left to go back to safety. He starts heading right. And I'm like, what are you doing? He said, I want to go back up there and see where it's at or see if I can see where it's at. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We don't need to go back up there. Please, let's just go to the SUV. And I'm like begging him to go to the SUV. And I'm in tears and everything, still shaking all over. And he's like, no, I want to see it. And now thinking about it and talking to him last night, he only got to see its arm. So in his mind, he wanted to see it. So, And in his mind, even though I'm frantic, he's not as afraid as me because he didn't see what I saw. But he's wanting to see it. So that's why he went back up the road, even with me begging him not to. So he's walk, make it, waking his way back up the road towards where we just come from and or towards where it was at. And I'm standing in the road just shaking, thinking I'm not going up there. Well, I hear what sounds like a knock come from um, the side of the road where the cabin's at, but on the left side of the dirt road going up to the cabin. So it's behind the SUV. So that scares me. So I start walking toward David instead of the SUV. 
So as I'm walking up the road, I'm looking all around. I'm looking up on that hill, scanning that hill, trying to see if I can see anything, you know, and looking back because I hear, heard that knock come from behind me, you know, trying to trying to make sure nothing's coming at me. And David heard the knock. You know, we both stopped when we heard it and looked back there. And uh, he continues walking. I'm walking up there towards him. And then we hear another knock. But this knock comes from the side of the hill that we just come from, up on the hill where we were just at, but more up on the ridge from where we were at, where we were down more on the flat above the cliff. It comes further, it was further up on the hill. But we hear a knock, and then we hear what we can only describe as a whoop sound. And I've listened to some sounds now, like some different videos, you know, and like some of your, you know, the stuff I've listened from, you know, your podcast and everything. Yeah. And I've heard, I know what that is now. That was a whoop from one of them because I've heard it now. And I mean, that's all it could be. I had never heard it before, you know, but that's what it was. It was just a, a whoop, you know, noise. So that scares me even worse. So I'm walking even faster, you know, trying to get up to David because for some reason in my mind, David was more safe to me that day than what even the SUV was. I don't know why, but he was. I guess because he was the one who kept me so calm on the hill. I mean, I don't even know what I was thinking at this time, to be honest with you. I really don't. I was so tore up. But um, as I'm walking up the hill uh, or walking up the road, uh, I don't get very much further than right to the left of me up on the hill, which is the side of the road the cabin's on. I hear another wood knock. Well, this scares me again, and I'm I'm literally going up the road, walking as fast as I can, and doing circles like every two steps, looking all around, you know, trying to make sure nothing's coming at me, you know, shaking all over. And uh, I just get a couple more steps, and then all of a sudden I hear something take off in the woods back to the right, where, you know, the hill where we had just saw it at. Something sounded like it took off from the creek up the cliff, up into the hill. And when I heard that, I glanced that way and just took off running as straight as I could, screaming to David. Now, about this time, David's already at the waterfall, and he looks at me like I've lost my mind. And he's like, why are you running and screaming? And I'm like, "Uh, did you not just hear that? And he's like, the wood knock? And I said, no, did you not just hear that thing run up the daggone hill? Something run up the hill. And he said, no, I didn't hear that. Where the waterfall is, it's kind of loud, so I guess he couldn't hear it from where he was at. Oh, yeah. So that's basically what happened right there in that situation. Yeah. So eventually you guys leave. I would imagine you go back to the SUV and get out of there. (laughs) Well, no, not quite. We go back to the SUV and he does not want to leave. He's afraid that if we leave where I'm so upset and afraid that I won't never go back in the woods again. And he's already dealt with that for the last, you know, 18 years. Me not wanting to go in the woods. He don't want me to get into that point again so he says you know try to overcome your fear let's just stay here we'll stay here by the vehicle but not leave yet so that's what we're doing we're staying by the suv we stay in there for probably about an hour or so um every once in a while we can hear something walking you know or whatever i think we heard like another wood knock at some point but we're right there by the suv and i feel safe well david finally gets bored with standing by the suv and he says Oh, there's one more thing I want to tell you. When we got back to the SUV, I'm still shaking and everything so bad that David's worried that I'm going to have a stroke. He literally tells me, I'm afraid you're going to stroke out. I really am. And I've got one of the smart watches. So he gets my smart watch, you know, and he checks my heart rate with my watch. And at this time, I'd already been sitting down for about 15 minutes, you know, and it's been a while since this happened and I'm at the SUV safe. But he's still so worried about me. He checks my heart rate and my heart rate was still 134 sitting there so i feel that yeah, shook up huge. over yeah so uh, as like i said it'd been over an hour or so and david decides he says i'm gonna go walk up the dirt road towards mine's cabin now like, no, no 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 you're not leaving me here and he said no i'm not going to go very far he said i'm just going to go right up here and just you know look at look at the road or whatever i was like well you better not go very far you're not leaving me <laughs> so he takes his little walk up mike's road and then he comes back and he says, uh, you want to walk up here with me? And I said, nope, I do not. And he said, no, really, I think you want to walk up here with me. And I said, no, I really do not want to walk up here with you. And he said, no, really, there is, I found a footprint behind a tree. Well, it looks like an impression of a foot behind the tree right off the side of the road. He said, I want you to see it and see what you think. Well, he knows my curiosity. 
So I was like, okay, fine, but we're just going there and then we're going to come back. And he's like, okay. And this isn't very far from us, maybe 50 feet from us up that road. It's not very far. So I make my way up to that tree and he shows me the impression. And sure enough, it does look like something had been standing behind that tree. And that tree, actually, if you stand behind it and look, it's looking directly at the SUV. So something had been standing there. I can't say what it was or whatever. It looked like a human print or humanish print, but it, you can't tell in grass. It was in grass, so you can't tell. It was big, but you can't, you know, you can't tell any kind of uh, detail or anything about it. So he says, well, now that we're here, why don't we just go right over here in the creek and just look right here? We'll stay right in this area, but we'll look right here. And I was like, all right. So we walk over there in the creek, and we're just kind of looking around. And at this time, I'm starting to settle down. Nothing's happening, you know, I'm still shaky, but trying to calm down, you know, and I'm telling myself, it never come after me. Even looking at it in the eyes, it didn't act aggressive, it didn't look aggressive to me, you know, so I don't, I don't have anything to fear, and it's on the other side of the hill. So, we're looking around and everything, and on the side of the creek, there's, you know, a little bank, you know how the creeks get up, and then they, you know, they, did, uh, they go down, and they leave, uh, you know, a dirt bank, basically, a flat dirt bank. And in this dirt bank, there is a footprint. And it is a big one. And it is for sure a footprint. And it's a barefoot footprint. And, you know, we're looking at it and we see, and I've got pictures of it. It, uh, there had been a limb, um, probably about two inch diameter, three inch diameter, probably two inch a limb that had been across where it stepped. And when it stepped, it was, Whatever it was, was heavy enough that it, it broke the limbs that were laying across the print, broke the one, and it snapped and was actually standing straight up in the air where it had snapped that limb. And those limbs are buried in the mud in that print, completely buried. The only way you can see them is because on over from the print, they're, you know, not buried. They're out on the ground, laying on the ground. But in this print, they're buried. So I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know, this is a print. I could cast this. And this print, um, we were, I stepped right beside it to see if I could leave a print. David stepped beside it. And the only print that we were leaving in this area was uh, you could barely make out the tread of our boot. So either this thing stepped here when it was still really, really muddy or it's a heavy thing. And by the looks of the way the limbs we pushed down in there. It looked like it to be heavy because it was, you know, a good inch and a half down in the dirt, if not more. Yeah. Let me, so I, let me ask you real ahead. quick, Pansy, and we'll come back yeah. to the print. But you were looking through the binoculars and you were looking yeah. at this thing. For the audience who's never seen one, would you describe what you saw? When I was looking at it, um, I don't know how to describe. It's almost like a... You know how you have a stare down with somebody and both of you don't want to blink? You know, you can't blink. First one to blink, you're out. Yeah. That's that's kind of like what Farrell felt like. It's almost like, I know, I felt like I was in shock. It didn't look like it was in shock as far as like having its eyes big around or something like that. But it was just staring at me. Just, I, I felt like it was staring in my soul. I mean, you know what I mean? It's just, and that's most of what I paid attention to because I was staring right in my eyes. But in looking at it, where it's through the binoculars, because it was probably about 75 yards away from me behind this tree. And then I had the binoculars up. So it looked more like it was like, you know, I don't, I, I don't even know, five, ten, maybe five, between five and ten feet away from me, maybe, maybe closer. I, I'm not sure. It was far enough away that I could still see its body, too, and not close enough that I could just see its face. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Okay. So I seen the outline of it. Um, the head, I remember it, it did not look cone headed to me. And I know I've heard people talking about the, what is it? The conical head, the the cone head kind of shape. Yeah. Um, to me, it didn't look like it had that shape, but it wasn't really round either. It did kind of pop up, but it wasn't a big conical head, maybe a slot one, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And it, because it wasn't flat and it wasn't really rounded, but it was kind of, kind of conical, I guess is what, the way I'd describe it. Um, it had black fur all over it, even its face. Um, its eyes were black. I mean, black. I could not even see a pupil. It was black. 
I didn't even see like the whites of its eyes or anything. You know, like with us, you can see the color of our eyes and you see the whites. I didn't even see any whites of its eyes. It was just literally like somebody took two black mar marbles the size of 50 cent pieces and popped them in this thing's head. That's what it looked like. And its face, the skin of its face that wasn't covered in hair was like a, a darker gray color, not light gray and not like charcoal, but you know, I guess it'd be a medium gray color. Uh, and I remember seeing gray above the eyes and I, ca I can't remember if the thing had eyebrows or I don't remember paying attention to that. But I remember seeing the gray above the eyes like it had gray on the forehead. And I remember the gray coming across the nose and the cheeks. And I remember the nose was really wide. To me, where the way I was looking at it, it looked like it could have been possibly more, more of a flat nose. I don't think it was sticking out very far, which I didn't see the thing from profile, so I can't be sure. But to me, it looked like it was more of a flat type nose, flat and wide. But I didn't see nostrils. You know how the apes, you see nostrils first thing? They got the big old wide nostrils. Yeah. I couldn't see nostrils. I don't remember seeing nostrils. I just seen a nose more like ours. And uh, from the like the cheekbone down, there was just fur in the front even. Uh, but I did see uh, like a that same gray color, like it was nose, then fur, and then that gray color. And t I think what I was seeing was its lips across there. But it just looked like a line of gray, the, a wide line of gray. And, I mean, I, that's what I think it was. That's the only thing I figure out was that it was lips. I mean, it never opened its mouth or anything like that for me to be sure. But I'm assuming because it was the nose and hair and then that gray color again that that was its lips. But it didn't really look like I had a bunch of lips. You know, it was thin. You know what I mean? And then from, from then on, it was black. And I remember the facial hair, I couldn't tell if it was, I'm assuming like, like a goatee or beard or whatever. But it blended so well with the chest hair that I really couldn't tell. And it didn't, to me, look like it was matted or real nasty or anything like that. It actually looked kind of pretty, like pretty black hair. You know, it wasn't like it didn't take care of itself, I guess. You know, it was just black hair. But it didn't, I didn't see any like dreadlocks or mud hanging from it or leaves in its fur or anything that made me think that it was really nasty or anything. It, that's what I'm trying to get at. Uh, it, from where I saw it behind the tree there, it was a good over four foot up the tree where its head was. And then, like I said, I couldn't see from the waist down. And uh, it was wide, like real wide. I mean, it was wider than my son, just the part that I saw, which was basically from uh, the left side of its neck over to the right. That had to be over two foot that I saw sticking out from the tree. It was, it was, um, I can't, I don't know if you're in an ambulance right now, but if you are, we can, you know, yeah. cut that part out. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just wanted to pause there so can, you get that. Yeah. Can I ask you real quick? Did the expression sure. change at all on the creature's no. face? The only thing it did was blink. That was it. It didn't, like, its eyes didn't get great big or um, it didn't roll its eyes. It didn't look down. It didn't look to the side. It was just looking, That's I think that's one of the reasons it felt like it was almost like it was fake at first because I didn't freak completely out until it blinked and moved. And then it's like, okay, that thing is real, <laughs> you know, because it didn't yeah. move. It just looked right at me, felt like it was looking me in the soul, looking at me forever, it felt like. And then until it blinked and moved, it, you know, it was like it, it didn't move at all. It was so still. Just looking at me. And like yeah, I said, I that was the first time it blinked. I would imagine, you know, there's that moment where you've heard of pareidolia, right? Where you're looking at a bush and you see a face and you're like, oh, okay, yes. well, I'm not. Yeah. But the moment it blinks and moves, you're like, holy crap, that's real. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. It's he, like I, I knew I was seeing it, but then I was like still second guessing myself and, you know, saying, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, I see this thing. But still in my mind, I, my mind was not wanting to accept it. You know, and then it blinked, and then I was like, oh, my God, it's real. You know, and then that's why I flipped out. Let me ask you, what what do you think that they are? What do you think that these creatures actually are? Honestly, from what I saw that day with its face, because 
to me, it did not. It looked ape-ish, but to me, it looked more human. Um, Because I've been trying to figure out how to describe what I saw, trying to draw it and everything. But to me, it looked um, more like what you would, uh, like a Neanderthal. You know what I mean? More Neanderthal than ape. If that makes sense. Yeah, kind of because, what, what think, scientists think Neanderthals look like. Exactly. We've all seen cavemen. Yeah, I get what you yes, mean. Yeah, right. But I think it's because of the way its nose was and stuff like that. It looked more human than ape to me. So to me, at first, I thought it was just some some form of animal out there. And, you know, and it may be, but I think the thing is way too intelligent to just be animal. Honestly. Yes. It might be some form of animal, but I think it's part human. And I think it's intelligent enough that it has evaded us for this long and knows things that we don't even know. And I really think it's part human. And I think it may be part of our history, you know, part of us. I don't know, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it could be. It I mean, especially, be yeah. yeah, especially with the way you describe it, pacing you and your husband and, uh, your son, you know, we, you can't. I can't think of too many animals that can do that. I can't even think of very many humans that could do that. You know, right. walk you step for step, you know, through right. this area. I know when you went back, there's a reason why you only saw it from the waist up. Would you describe why you only saw it from the waist up? Yes. Um, when me and uh, my husband, we went back again on the 15th too. But in talking about it, when we was up there by the waterfall, and after we got home, looking at the video I'd taken. And when we're talking about standing there, um, we found out that it wasn't from where I was at viewing the tree. It looked like the tree was on the hill, but near the creek, really near the creek. But what we found out was that tree that I had described earlier, that the creek had washed out part of it and part of its roots were hanging in the creek. It was actually standing in the creek behind that tree. That's why I couldn't see it from the waist down. And that's also why when I saw the back of it, we're thinking that when it bent down and disappeared, it just bent down below the bank. And that's why it looked like it disappeared because it actually was never up on the hill with us. It was in the Creek where we had come from. Yeah. It's very strange. Would you want to see one again? I fought with myself all the time. Like I said, we went back on the 15th and, and I'm going to go back again. It's almost like I'm scared to death to see one again, but I want to know what it was. And it's like that drive to want to know what I saw and to prove what I saw was real is oh, is just overriding my fear and, and maybe common sense. <laughs> but And I'm going to go back. I'm not going to stop. I have got to find out. I mean, I would love to find somebody that I could trust to take with me that knows more than me, that could look at what we found and look at what we've seen. I mean, that place up there is absolutely perfect for something to hide. It is full of ravines that are 15 foot deep and run a hundred foot long. Anything could hide in there easily. And I mean, I would love to take somebody and find out, you know, what it is exactly that we've been seeing. And I've seen twice now there. Yeah. There's a few people I have in mind that I'll, I'll make i uh, I'll email after we, uh, we get done here. But, um, if you're interested, I'll, I'll email okay. you their information and you can contact them. Yeah, I'm definitely them. interested. Um, Definitely yeah, it is fascinating. I mean, there's so much that goes on there in Kentucky. And I know a lot of people, um, I've heard more encounters off the air from Kentucky than I've actually had on the air because most people don't right. want to come on and they don't want to be seen yep. as crazy or as a liar or, and that's not yep. what my show is about, but I, you know, I understand that culture in that area to where, you know, unless it's family or yeah. very close friends, you just, you don't tell them. Um, yeah. I felt like I was literally going to blow up with this information and not being able to really tell anybody, but my close family, I've not even told my brother about what I seen on May 1st because I, you know, telling him what I saw in 2003, he's already, you know, saying I'm crazy and all this stuff. And I didn't see what I saw, but he can't explain to me what I did see though either. And I've not even began to tell him what I saw May 1st because I know it's going to be ridicule and I don't want to hear it. I know what I saw. You cannot tell me I saw anything different from what I saw. And nobody's going to tell me I saw different. And I'm to the point where I am so sure of what I saw that I get mad when someone tells me I didn't see what I saw. I yeah. know what I saw. And you I, know, it's, it's that serious. 
Yeah, and I understand that. I understand that completely. Um, they're real. I mean, people run into them all the time. They're definitely real. I think what's fascinating is in your area, they really don't seem to be aggressive with you guys. Um, you know, the throwing of oh, the God. branch and that sort of thing. I think that's more or less to get your attention. I think if they really mm -hmm. wanted to uh, come rolling down that hill and snap everyone's neck, they could. Uh, yeah. But I think did. it was just more curiosity, you know, of, of what are you that's guys doing? That's what it seemed like to me, too, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, no, no, no. There's one, there's one thing that I want to ask you real quick. Um, when we come out of the creek, and now knowing what we know, that thing was in the creek, had to been in the creek still while we were in the woods, and that that's probably what I heard running up the hill was it running up the hill away from us when I got next to it when I was in the road. But those tree knocks and everything, that whoop that we heard all around us when we was in the road after we saw it, what on earth could that be? And I mean, it felt like we were surrounded by them, like almost like they were trying to get our attention or something. Yeah, I have a theory on yeah. that. I, I think when they do that, they're communicating like you guys aren't leaving. You guys are coming back up that area. Um, and so I'm a you're, flat tail. yeah, it, kind of alerting others is what I think is going on. And I could be wrong, but I think, um, you know, instead of yelling to someone, hey, they're coming up your way, you'll do tree knocks and whoops and trying to get i think it's more or less signaling to other ones that's what i think is going on but right. you know no one really knows i would right. just be careful going back i would be very very careful going back even though i don't think um i think if you were going to get aggression you would have gotten it by now um mm -hmm. but i would still be really 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 careful going back oh i am yeah, it's an it's an amazing account, and keep me up to date, will you? Will you let me know if you guys go back and something else happens? I will. I sure will. And I sure I appreciate it. Yeah, I sure appreciate you taking the time to come on, Pansy. Yeah, thank you for letting me get it out. I feel better now that I've gotten it all out. And that's it for tonight, everyone. Remember, if you've had an encounter, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. You get a chance to check out sasquatchchronicles.com. You can become a member and get additional shows. Until next time, everyone. Save me from myself, let me drown in my blood.